Hey guys, welcome back for another Psychic Adventure. Today, instead of working on our cars, we will be working on our garage. So as many of you who watched our previous videos know, we are not working in a shop, we're working in our homes whenever we're working in our car, and essentially our garage is like most residential garages, it only fits two cars and there's lots of other stuff occupying our garage that includes like home items, water heaters, things like that, right? So we don't exactly have sufficient space. Tommy and I also like to buy a lot of car parts, wheels, tires, etc. So obviously those things need to be stored somewhere and oftentimes they're not stored in the best place. One of the things that Tommy and I have wa been wanting to do is to make our garage space a little bit more efficient so that when we're actually working on our cars we have enough space to work in. And that's why we bought a tire rack. I saw some reviews for the um, mm -hmm. this particular tire rack and people said that they could like, if you mount it properly, um, you could like do push-ups on it. Uh, push you could do pull-ups on it. So from what it sounds like, it sounds pretty sturdy. 400 pounds weight capacity. So in order to do the tire rack uh, installation correctly, you would need a 316 drill bit, a 516 socket, and a 916 socket. Um, and also you need to have step finders and a drill obviously. Um, the step finder is to find where the, the steps are, uh, but in this case it's a little bit more obvious because usually drywall, you'll see the, where the white lines are. Uh, that's usually where the studs are, but we'll still use a stud finder to find exactly where the stud is and that's where we're gonna bolt our brackets to because that's the most secure way to do it. Um, and right now we're just trying to determine like uh, how wide we kind of want it. And as you can see, uh, you, you see this giant like rack on the left side, uh, that's kind of like limiting how wide we can have it. We may take it apart and move it more to the left so we have more space. Uh, uh, for the tire rack. The wider the tire rack, obviously you can uh, fit wider tires or like more, more wheels and tires on the rack. Uh, there's a weight capacity on it. It's about 400 pound capacity. Uh, you don't want to go over that and you want to probably go lower than that. You don't want to be at the limit either. So uh, Tiffany has a set of four, uh, gra are those gram lights or the BBS. They're those BBS. Are, those are BBS. They are like what, 205s or 195? No, dude, 195. 195 uh, 15s. So yep. uh, four of them together measured at about 85 centimeters. Let's assume that these three are studs, right? Uh, it's still over the stud a little bit. Uh, so you can't really safely secure. Um, the, the bolts or the brackets too. 
So what we are thinking is we uh, will all use this uh, stud right here and expand the rack all the way to this stud over there. And that would give us about 120 centimeters uh, worth of like space or like wide. So we can like uh, not only fit uh, Tiffany's uh, set of wheel, but also like maybe one or two extra tires on top. Plus, if I ever on top, not on top, but on the side. Uh, plus, if I, I, I ever want to put uh, my set of wheels, like they're seventeens. Usually, I run like two thirty fives to even two fifty fives. They're definitely a lot wider, and hopefully, that way will fit uh, all four. That's like way too wide. We don't need that wide. No. Literally the four four studs is good enough. Like this wide? Yeah, I think that's good enough already. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, we, we know I, this is a stud. This is for sure a stud. Yeah, so anyways, I'm scanning the thing and you know how it was like reading there was a stud here somewhere? Yeah. Like here? We know that's not a stud, right? I think there's like something in the wall. Maybe, but I wouldn't really go like, off of that. Because these lines generally indicate there's a stud, yep. and it's like right in the middle of the line, so yep. that we can confidently say that's, that's a, stud. a stud. Anyways, so in, I feel like you guys will probably know by now how to read this, but I'm just going to explain it. So there's this triangle shape here, right? Um, it might be different for different models, but this particular one uses a triangle. When these three light up is that you're getting close to a stud. Only when you get to the top of the triangle where it lights green is when you found the stud. That's about how high we want it. Hey okay, guys. Just mark it first. Oh, where the bracket goes. <laughs> Damn it. Fight you. It's not scientific at all. Uh, doesn't have to be like very deep, just, just start it. You know it's uh, in the stud when like you feel the resistance. Usually if you're just drilling into drywall, you just go through a very thin like layer and it's like there's no resistance after. But usually with the stud it's like there's a lot of resistance. Like this. 516 socket. As you can see, we have put up the two side brackets. One thing that's kind of weird is why is this upside down? This sticker, it makes things really confusing. And as you can see, uh, the way they showed it is the ear faces on the inside. So this is the proper way to do it. But why the sticker is upside down is beyond me. Like, you make people like second guess. Now that we have done the hard part, 
uh, putting up the two side brackets, we just need to uh, bolt on the two bars in the middle. And then after that, we should be done. And this part, you'll notice that it like barely clears our yes. garage door. But we tested it and everything should be okay. It's just a very tight fit. Obviously, because we have a very small garage space. But if it clears, it clears. Tires just fucking fall through the I know. middle. <laughs> I think this might be a little too wide. What do you think? It'll be too wide. Yeah. I think it's too wide. Yeah. I think you need to do maybe like two in. Maybe this one? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, the further in you do it, the higher the tire will sit. The farther in you do? Yeah, the front end, because uh, there's less space, so the tire get pushed up. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Well, we'll just test it first. Yeah. We can always adjust it. You're bolting it in the wrong one. What? You're oh, bolting it, you know, it's wrong. Oh, it's wrong? Oh. The fuck? Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the fuck? I can see it flex. Yeah, I already did the inside, so those are pretty tight. Yeah. Let me try pulling on it. Hun, we don't want to disclose Tiffany's weight. <laughs> but. Whoa, lifting. It's strong enough, right? Did you see it flex? Let's try again. Not really. It's pretty sturdy. I don't feel any flex. Go ahead again. What this one? Should be oh, okay. It feels pretty sturdy to me. Coop. We. Barely clears. When you put it on. Yep. Perfect. And then you also have some extra space here for wider tires. Yep. So it would definitely fit, I think. Let's see if we can. Uh, you could literally fit five 195s on here. It would fit. Can't fit. Oh, so I guess the width fits, but. There might be some issues clearing yeah. the height. There you go. So this is a 24517, so you have a extra space that you can like put on here. Ta da! So we're done with the tie rack install. I think it took us maybe an hour to an hour and a half to get everything done. This is a really good solution for those that have a really small garage space, but obviously likes to buy things like Tommy and I. So if you're looking to open up more space in your garage um, and you have a lot of tires that you don't normally access, this is a really good solution for that. The product link for this item will be in the description below. So if you're interested in this product, which we bought from Amazon, 
check it out. If you have any questions about the product itself or the installation process, feel free to leave a comment or a question down below. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more Spanking Adventure. Bye!